I rarely, rarely have even time to indulge and look back at the other films unless I'm showing E.T. to my grandchildren for the first time. But on something like this, it was very much like therapy for me to actually, not so much, but yeah, therapy for actually being able to speak about the process and about the feelings and about how my movies relate to my family and my own personal life, but also being able to see everything in continuity is something that I've never done before. I've never actually watched my films yeah. unspool through a, another filmmaker's point of view. It, it feels kind of strange. I mean, it's enormously challenging, and, and uh, I tried not to think too much about that. Actually, I think the privilege of being able to tell stories about artists who I admire, it, it's, it's, it's a privilege, and, and I feel a tremendous responsibility to, t to get it right. I don't have some kind of a, a map of, you know, a, a strategy of any kind. I kind of, I'm very reactive to material, very reactive to ideas, uh, reactive to my own ideas and, and things that, that I hear about and I read. So I, I don't really uh, switch back and forth because that's the plan. If something like The Post, which is coming out, grabs me, which I made very, very quickly because I found it to be very relevant, that's something that I'll jump into. And then something that took three years, like Ready Player One coming out next year, which is the antithesis, it's the, it's, it's the cultural opposite of the post, I'll be able to jump back into my boyhood and make a film like that. But it's not planned. 